Tonight, I've set myself quite the challenge. I'm going to try and image as many galaxies as I can in one night. But not only that, I'm going to start with the closest ones to Earth and then step in stone out into the universe, see how far deep into the universe we can go, but still being able to see detail on the galaxies we capture. This telescope I'm using tonight is a six inch Ritchie Cretchen telescope and in some ways it's actually ideal for this and then some other ways it's not. What it's good at is having plenty of focal length reach to get up, up and close to these objects but it also means it gives you quite a good resolution for your pixel size of your camera so we're imaging at 0.6 arc seconds which is quite frankly more than I can realistically expect to achieve at sea level. It's probably closer to two arc seconds in reality a lot of nights, but it's nice to know that the resolution's there if, if you do manage to get perfect seeing conditions on the night. This also depends on how accurate your guiding's gonna be. And again, this is gonna be a challenge because I've got a separate guider, a 50 mil finder guider, rather than what would be ideal is an on camera guider like one of the SI Air cameras or an off axis guider. So this isn't an ideal guiding setup but it is at least good for sort of counterbalancing some of the, the weight here because it is quite back heavy. I know this works because I've had a practice with it over a few nights but I've not been pop the images up on the screen. I've not been particularly thrilled with them. These are live stacked images that have just been tweaked. I've had to dial in my guide settings to get better guiding as well. To help me though, I've got this uh, trifocus mask, which is gonna really help me dial in the focus and the mirror collimation by paying attention to the diffraction spikes it produces and getting them all equidistant to each other. Then I should get a sharper image, but it's quite a challenge guiding at this focal length I've got to say so I think that's going to be my biggest challenge of the night but this focus mask is certainly going to help a bit with the sharpness besides that because I'll be able to dial in that mirror alignment which these Richard Cretchens are particularly renowned for being quite tricky with. Cool right catch you in a bit. It was only right to start with our neighbouring galaxy, M31, better known as Andromeda in the constellation Andromeda. This is just 2.5 million light years away, and its neighbouring galaxy there in the corner is M32, and it's thought that M31 is gravitationally stripping it of a lot of material, leaving it unusually small and dense. As we're zooming in here, it's quite apt because Andromeda is actually approaching our own Milky Way galaxy and is set to merge with us in about two to three billion years. This is M33, the Triangulum Galaxy. It's about three million light years away in the constellation of Triangulum, funnily enough. Its apparent magnitude is 5.7, so it's just about visible with binoculars under dark skies. It's one of the smallest galaxies in our local group and it contains around 40 billion stars. Typically galaxies contain in the region of about 100 billion, so it's a bit smaller. The guiding wasn't great for this capture, so I'm not going to zoom in on this one to show you in too much detail, but there are better images coming up. Next we move over to the constellation Ursa Major where we find M81, Messier 81, also known as Bode's Galaxy. This one lies about 12 million light years from Earth, so that's four times further away than the Triangulum Galaxy is. At the centre of this galaxy is a supermassive black hole, and that weighs tens of millions of times the mass of our own Sun. And there's quite a lot of gravitational interaction between this galaxy and its close neighbour M82 nearby, and I'll touch upon M82 in a moment. It'd be rude not to visit M82 as we're right next door. This one's also known as the Cigar Galaxy, probably for obvious reasons looking at the image. This one also lies at about 12 million light years away from the Earth, 
though just slightly further out than M81, which is close to 11.7 million light years away. Now, its close interaction with M81 has triggered an intense burst of star formation. This has driven huge streams of glowing hydrogen out from its core, gradually reshaping the galaxy over time. If we look carefully at the image, we can just about make out these hydrogen alpha outflows from the centre of the cigar. Next up we have NGC 6946, more commonly known as the Firework Galaxy. This galaxy lies 22 million light years away from Earth in the constellation of Cepheus. It's famous for producing an unusually high number of of observed supernova, which is where it gets its name from. Now, focus did slip a little bit during this capture, so I'll probably not zoom in on this one. Now, the next galaxy, I'll call it a bonus galaxy because I didn't capture it on this particular night. It was the night before, but it's a very interesting galaxy, so I did want to include it. Its technical name is NGC 891, but it's more commonly known perhaps as the Silver Sliver Galaxy and it lies about 30 million light years away from Earth so it fits in nicely with our little stepping stones out into the universe. Um, it's in the constellation of Andromeda and its structure is thought to be very similar to our own Milky Way but obviously we're viewing it edge on here so we can see all these thick dust lanes blocking a large amount of the starlight. Next we have NGC 7331, often called the Deerlick Galaxy. This is around 40 million light years away in the constellation of Pegasus. In the same field you might just about see some background galaxies, little smudges, and these are known as the Fleas. These lie actually much further out at around roughly 300 million light years away. This one's quite a leap in distance from the other galaxies we've seen so far. This is NGC 772, the Nautilus galaxy, around 130 million light years away in the constellation Aries. Its uneven spiral arms are the result of long-term gravitational interaction with a much smaller companion galaxy, NGC 770. This tugs at Nautilus, warping its structure over time. And there we have it. We started off with Andromeda, our closest neighbouring spiral galaxy, and we've leapfrogged slowly out further and further into the local universe and managed to get as far as the Nautilus galaxy, 130 million light years away. There were some galaxies in the background, three, 400 million light years away, but we, we couldn't see detail on those, but we could certainly see detail on Deerlick at 40,000 light years and indeed we could with the Nautilus galaxy which is a whopping 130 million light years out there in space. Quite incredible distances to be able to see detail on objects from your back garden at home with a six inch telescope and only an hour spent on each of these objects so don't be too put off if you've got quite a slow F9 telescope because I managed to grab some like seven or eight galaxies in one session, enough that I could still see detail on them. Yes, you'd probably want to spend those seven, eight hours on a single object if you want the best image possible, but these were live stacked images with the SI Air and then the final saved JPEG just had a bit of tweaking just to make bring out a bit more detail with like denoising and a bit of contrast, things like that. Nothing special whatsoever. And I've certainly learned that this tri Batonoff mask is a really useful tool to really nail in that focus and the collimation. I did have to tweak my collimation and focus after popping this on. And um, things I learned through the night as well is that I definitely get differential flexure with the finder scope, uh, finder guider. I definitely at that focal length with a Richie Kretchen, I think I definitely need either an on-axis camera, um, one of the SI Air cameras, or to or it'd be more affordable for me just to pop a off-axis guider on there. So I'm guiding from the main optics and not relying on the finder guider and the main optics to be absolutely pointing in the same in absolutely the same direction all the time. There was too much flexure going on, I think, because I was seeing 
some streaky stars. I did have to drop the exposure down from five minutes to two minutes to get on top of that uh, once or twice, um, but certainly it was reliable over two minute sub exposures. Anyway, that's enough jibber jabber about that. I just want to say big thank you to my channel members and Patreons for all the support you give the channel. Um, please consider it if you enjoy the content as well, or give me a thumbs up if you like the, the video. Uh, check out some other videos I've got maybe. And um, I also want to sort of like just pause for a moment as well and just say um, my thoughts are with Dylan O'Donnell um, with his cancer diagnosis is recently received. Um, we've not had the best of luck in the astronomical community recently with Ben, Naraban channel and Alan as well. He, very young. I still don't fully understand what happened to Alan. Um, so I just hope we're owed a little bit of karma that you get a better outcome, ma'am, and uh, we're all thinking about you. I'm just gonna leave it there.